going to be in Heavenly Highway, page 92. <laughs>
had a father would come to the time to thank for another opportunity to come to the house this morning. I was thankful for each one who came to the house today in order to be here. Just receive the blessing of being here. Just pray for you to be with the ones, Lord, that lost the loved ones, Lord, just to comfort them as only you can the next time. Uh, just be with the ones on our prayer list, Lord, and just deal with each case according to your will. Lord, just pray to be with this church and always be found teaching your word. Just be with Brother Russell as he brought the message this morning, Lord. It might be something like it's hard and each one take it to heart. Please write the message, Lord, and give me my sins. Thank you, that's Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. study right now we're studying on how to stand firm in a pagan world and that's something that we could all uh, uh, we all need to learn about because this is a pagan world we live in and we need to stand firm in it amen and we have kids classes too ma'am and we have kids and classes. we have kids classes as well with very fine teachers teach them, amen <laughs> so come be with us on Wednesday night is there any other announcements that I may have missed if not we'll go ahead and start with our prayer request then Let's remember the John Haney family. Don. Huh? Don. 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 I'm sorry, I thought it was John. 
Don. Aunt Wendy's brother. Okay. Remember Rhonda. Um, on the way to church this morning, there was somebody, I guess, I'm assuming Hydra playing off onto the side of the freeway. I don't know if they were okay. There were several cars over there. Just, okay. But they're all right. Nobody got hurt. Just uh, remember, Brother uh, Fred Reed and uh, the Reeds, he fell again this morning and they're staying home with him, uh, keeping an eye on him, uh, make sure everything's all right. You know, he done that about uh, nearly a year ago, maybe maybe around that, and I broke his neck last year when he fell. So they're, they're keeping a close eye on him. Let's continue to remember uh, Sister Jan and, and Deborah, uh, their time of loss. And, uh, is there anyone else that needs to be mentioned? We have any other unspoken? There's a little boy named Ricky Lee. Yeah. Well, he got shot this morning. You see the five-year-old Laura? What now? How old was he? No, he, this is a sixth grade. Oh, wow. He, he's staying. He's doing okay. I ain't trying to be funny, yet, but they got to get that boy well. He, he was the one who scored all the points for their uh, football team uh, last week and won the game for them. So uh, he's, he's a fine athlete. We want him to get well anyway, whether he's an athlete or not. But uh, it's just a, you, you got to be careful when you're handling guns. I, I always say treat all of them like they're loaded, whether they are or not. Last night, my uh, youngest sister in Pennsylvania, she messaged me about um, 11.30 our time, 12.30 their time, said that um, their son, Connor, who's um, in high school, had a friend that was messaging him that was uh, contemplating suicide at that very moment. Um, another friend of his last week had taken a bunch of pills to try to commit suicide herself, too. But um, they went over to his house um, they, he said he wasn't sure where his stepdad was. His mom was there. He snuck out. They sat. He sat in their van with them for about an hour and a half, um, and they just. She said he just needs to know he's loved, but just pray with them as they as they as they work with this this boy. He just turned. Today is his 16th birthday, and uh, he just needs love. Amen. And folks, that's a. That, that's a big ministry for us right there. There are so many people in this world who commit suicide uh, daily, and the big reason is what Miss Nancy said, they don't feel loved. We need to let them know that, first of all, there's a Savior that loves Amen. them. Amen. And we love them as well. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. That's Peter. what's so sad about it right there. They feel like that is their only escape. It's their last option. Yeah. You know, and it's not. It is not. That's why we need to get the gospel. Out. That's right. Amen. So we need to remember them in our prayers. Is there anyone else that needs to be mentioned? Uh, Jackson Kerber. He's a young teenage boy with you when he was smaller. And he said, uh, you understand, he's had uh, emergency uh, mm -hmm. appendix surgery and he's just not doing well after that. He's... Let's remember him. Anybody else? Anyone? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer and lift up all these who have been mentioned. Um, Brother Scott, would you lead us, please, sir? you back up here. we got to get Shirley through a special and get her out of here. All right. Thanks, everybody. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Come on up here, Diane. I'll, I'll thank you.
specials? Drive one here, I ain't never sung before. Just got the soundtrack for it yesterday. We're gonna give it a try. <clears throat> Listen to the words, not how I sing it. I uh, just finished uh, last month preaching a series of messages from the book of Genesis. We talked all about creation, and we talked about that a little bit in our Wednesday night class. And you know, Christians uh, are made fun of. Uh, in this day and time for believing in uh, life coming about through creation. We're called unintelligent for believing that there's some supernatural God who created all of this. To my opinion, uh, well, they can call me unintelligent if they want to. Uh, it doesn't take intelligence to believe in God. Actually, all it takes is just a little common sense and just looking around. And you can see that there's a God. Amen. That's what this song talks about. I believe for every drop of rain that falls of clouds. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows.
As a matter of fact, I've done so much study on David and uh, I, I've looked at his life. I've brought a series of sermons here on, on the Psalms that he's written. And, and I've studied so much on him, I almost think of him as somebody I know, Brother Gary, even though I've never met him. But I look forward one day to meeting him in heaven and having some great fellowship as we just sit around for, for years and just talk about the things of God. But what a great man David was. And before I get into this, I just want to show you what a great man he was. First of all, uh, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. And first of all, he was a very courageous man. We remember the stories in the Bible about how he was a little shepherd boy and he would tend his father's sheep. One day a lion came up and he slew that lion. Another time a bear came up and he slew that bear. And we all know the story about how he made short work out of tall Goliath. Amen? But he was a courageous man. Not only was he a courageous man, he was also a gifted man. Very talented. He was a musician, a poet, a king. David, who uh, led the kingdom in such uh, heights of glory that he was probably known as the best king that Israel ever had. Few people in all the world have been more singly blessed and gifted and more talented and had more ability than what old David had. But not only was he a courageous man, and not only was he a gifted man, but he was also a very humble man. Did you know that after he was anointed to be king of Israel, he went right back to tending sheep? That's humbleness right there. That's humble. And David was humble, but not only was he so humble, he was also a, a noble man. You remember uh, reading in the Bible how Saul was trying to kill David. Now, and Saul was king of Israel at this time, and he was jealous of David, and he wanted him dead. And David fled for his life, the Bible says, like a partridge on the mountains of Israel. And yet there came a time where David had the opportunity to kill Saul. It would have been very easy for him to take his life, but you know what? He didn't do it. He didn't do it. David said, God forbid that I should touch the Lord's anointed. I mean, what nobility this man called David had. Now I want you to listen to me. The reason I mentioned all of those great things, of all of those great things that he was, and yet David backslid. He fell, and he fell hard, and he fell terrible, and folks, tragic, very tragic, was the fall of David. Now that brings me to tell you something, and I want you to listen. I want you to hear this. If David became a backslider, don't you think that ought to be a warning to you and for me? I mean, listen, there is not a person in this place today that loves God any more than what David did. A man after God's own heart. And folks, this is a solemn warning. What a solemn warning this is, this passage of Scripture, it ought to be to every one of us to think that if it could happen to him, it could sure happen to us. So I want you to pay attention. Please don't let the devil steal away your attention. Don't let the devil steal away the seed that can be sown in your heart and in your mind today. Now, I want you to look at this story of David's sin. And the first thing I want you to see, my first point, is what I'm going to call the cause of David's sin. What caused this backslidden condition? I'm going to tell you something. It didn't happen overnight. It was a process. It was a process. And the very first thing uh, uh, that I want you to see, let's just look here in chapter 11, uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off of his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, we're going to be talking here, folks, about the cause of David's backslidden condition. And the very first cause was the sin of casualness. The sin of casualness. David has become very casual about the things of the Lord. Verse 1 tells us that it was a time when kings went to war. But David wasn't at war. David uh, didn't go to fight Israel's battle. He was not gone fighting the enemies of Israel. 
David was the king. He was the commander in chief. He was the warrior king. And in his younger days, there was no way he would have been at home. He would have been right out there on the front fighting where he was supposed to be. But you know what happened? David has had victories piled upon victories. David has known nothing but success. And now he thinks that he can send Joab and his men and say, you know what? God has taken care of us in the past, Joab. You just go on out there with the boys and y'all take care of it. God, He'll continue to keep on blessing. And David has decided to just live a life of ease. You see, what he's doing is he's taking God for granted. He's taking the blessings of God for granted. He's taking the, the victories of God for granted and he's sending somebody else out there into battle. Now the Bible tells us that we are to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something. There are many Christians who are just like David was. God has blessed you in the past and you've known victory. You've known God's power. God has been with you and, and now you're beginning to coast. And now you're beginning to presume. You just simply assume that God is going to be with you and He's just going to keep on blessing. And you're committing the sin of casualness. And if you'll notice in verse 2, the Bible says it was at evening time. It says at evening time. That means evening time. Listen, it was evening time that He arose from His bed. Look at that. Evening time, it's time to be going to bed and he's just now getting out of bed. Do you see what he's been doing? That means David has been lounging around. He's been loafing around all day just being lazy. That doesn't even sound like David. How casual. Look at how casual he's become. You know, there's an old saying, an old proverb as it is, that says, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. It's very true. You've heard it. Folks, that's what happened to David. If they would have had TVs back then, Brother Charlie, he'd have been laid up on his bed all day long watching TV or on his cell phone with Facebook. He just simply taking it easy. And about evening time, he gets out of bed. Now, let me tell you something, folks. God never intended for any of you to be idle in spiritual things. He didn't. And God never intended for you to get out of the battle spiritually. Never. Never. You say, well now, Brother Russell, I'm going to retire one of these days. I'm getting about that age and I'm looking forward to retiring. Well, you may retire from your earthly job. But listen, you're never supposed to retire from serving Jesus. Paul said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That means you retire from serving the Lord when you're dead. You're to be a living sacrifice. I want to tell you, those of you who are retired, that doesn't excuse you from serving the Lord. That just gives you more time to serve the Lord. Did you know that? You have more time to pray, more time to witness. Now, I'm not saying that, that you don't deserve time to get out and go fishing and put around in the golf cart on the golf course or, or garden or things like that. But as far as your relationship with God, folks, your work never ends. None of our work never ends for Him. You'd better watch that idleness, I'm telling you. It'll put you in a dangerous position. Here was a man who loved God, but he had begun to take God for granted. He took the victories and blessings of God. He took them for granted. And maybe some of you have been so blessed in your past Christian life. And let me tell you something. It can even happen to a church as a whole. A church can be so blessed... That we get casual about the blessings of God. But now watch this. Watch this. His sin of casualness then led to the sin of carelessness. Of carelessness. Continue to read there in verse 2 again. It says, And it came to pass at an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. You might say, now, a preacher, he couldn't help the fact that he saw her. He, he was just walking around and there she is. Let me go back to what I first said. If he'd been where he was supposed to be, he never would have saw her. But let's go ahead just for argument's sake. Just for argument's sake, let's say, uh, you know, she ought not have been out there taking a bath like that. True. True. 
And, and I will say this, if God holds a man accountable for lusting, certainly He'll hold a woman accountable for acting or dressing or undressing in a seductive way. But the idea here is, folks, when the Bible says she was very beautiful to look upon, the idea is that David just stayed there and he stared and he gawked and he gazed at her. He looked upon her with bad thoughts in his mind. Remember what Jesus said in the book of Matthew? He said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman lustfully hath committed adultery in his heart. You see, David now, has, he's, he's been very casual, and now he's becoming very careless. I mean, had he been in battle, or had he been close to God like he should have been, the very moment that he saw her, he would have turned away and not looked. <clears throat> but now he's entertaining thoughts in his mind that he has no business entertaining in his mind. But you say, preacher, it's all around us. It's all around us, preacher. How can we help it? The, the, the sin of lust, the temptation of lust is all around us. Folks, listen. It, it sure is. And we can't keep the birds from flying over our head, but doggone it, we can keep them from building a nest in our hair. There you go. Amen? And here's what happened to David. This thing is beginning to lodge down in his heart. You see, our, our text spoke of the, the backslider in heart. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The Bible says that a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whosoever looketh upon a woman lustfully in his heart hath committed adultery with her already. That's what Jesus said. And so, here David is, getting careless. He's dropped his guard. He's not keeping his heart. When the Bible says there that we're to keep our heart, that word keep means to guard. Guard your heart. And I want to tell you something, young men and young ladies. Listen to me today. You guard what goes into your eyes and into your ears and into your mind. The Bible says to keep or to guard your heart with all diligence. Listen, you wouldn't put garbage in your mouth, would you? You don't need to put it in your mind either. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from the holding of bribes, listen to this part, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. Now what God is saying there, God is saying that there is some violence and there is some sin in this world around you, and you'd better not look upon it. It's dangerous. Can a man take a fire in his bosom and not be burned? Can a, a man go upon hot coals and it not affect him? The Bible says that there are certain things that you are to close your eyes to. There are certain things you are to stop your ears up to. You're not to watch and you're not to listen. It's just like a little song that the kids used to sing. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. But many of God's people, they've gotten casual. They're so sophisticated. And they're watching things that they ought not to be watching. They're listening to things that they ought not to be listening to. They're going to uh, places that they have no business to go. Associating with people they have no business to associate with. And folks, when you do this, you become careless. Careless. Now David had first become casual. That was the first stage of this. And then he got careless. And folks, I'm going to stop right there. It gets worse. We'll talk about the other steps of this tonight. But maybe you're here today and you say, Brother Russell, that's, that's me that you're talking about. That's me. I, I've been one who's been careless. Or I haven't been doing much in the work of the Lord right now. I've been letting everybody else take care of it. Let me tell you something, brother or sister. If that's you, you are in a dangerous place. You're in the first step of a backslidden condition. Because you are committing the sin of casualness. And if you'll continue to commit that sin of casualness, you mark my word, before long, you're going to get careless. And you're just going to keep drifting farther and farther and farther away from God. If that's you, if you're in that condition, we're going to have a song of invitation. That's, that's the song leader to come. Ask all of you to stand. If you are in that condition, decide today to make things right and to come back to God, get back in His will. Don't drift off in a dangerous, backslidden condition. What are we going to say? 141.
Services at Pioneer this afternoon. Be in prayer for that. If you can't come, if you can't come, we'd love to have you. Anything else? If not, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Brother Charlie, would you lead us in closing prayer, please? Most holy and righteous heavenly Father, we thank you for your sister. Lord, we thank you for each one that's come out here to worship you, the true and living God. Lord, we just thank you for taking our place on the cross so we might have eternal life. Lord, we thank you for the church you established here. And Lord, we just ask for the leadership and guidance of your Holy Spirit that we might uh, always be found teaching and preaching the truth. Lord, we again ask you to be with the ones that's uh, on our prayer list. You know each case. Father, we just ask you to be with the grief and comfort in the Lord. Father, we just ask you to be with the lost that if there's one here uh, that's not saved, that Lord, they might accept you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, these things we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen.